only one small. Okay, shall we pray? Our kind and loving Father, thank you for being such a good God to us. Thank you for your love, your care, your message, which I knew every day. Even today, we have received new messages from you. Appropriate for today's challenges. We are grateful for that, oh Lord. And as we begin this day, we want to begin it with you. Therefore, dear Lord, we ask that you open our hearts so we may hear and have a good soil for the germination of your word. Prepare our ears so we can hear you speak to us. I also present myself to you that you may use me as a tool in your hand. Thank you for being such a good God to us. We pray us for all this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes, dear friends. We are continuing with the theme prayer works. Yesterday, we continued to learn from the example of Jesus. He prayed in submission to the Father. He prayed in alignment with the will of the Father. And because he trusted God the Father, he was willing to obey him, to follow his biddings and commands to the letter. And because we are learning from him, he is our master, we are his followers. We're taking instructions from him until we become like him, our master. So today, I want us to consider the potential of prayer, the potential of prayer. Let's read from the book of Mark, Mark chapter 11, and we read verses 24. I read from the New King James Version, and it reads thus, Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. May the Lord bless the reading of his word now and forevermore. Amen. This is not a blanket assurance that God will give us whatever we pray for as long as we have faith, that would be presumptuous. Jesus prayed, we have heard in the week, that he would not go through the suffering of the cross. But it was not God's will to remove that pain. Therefore, he, he also had to pray in alignment with God's will, and no, he said, not as I will, but as you will, my father. You see, the context of this statement, the statement that says, whatever things you ask when you pray, it is the fig tree, the fig tree incident, that is the context. Not only that, but the opposition of the Jerusalem leaders. When you read from chapter 11, particularly from verses 20 right down to 33, you get the entire context of this statement. It may be that 
not even these comments, if we are not understanding them properly, we may misunderstand what Jesus was saying. If understood properly, this statement, it may have the meaning outside its context. By context, I mean immediate context. It may have meaning outside that immediate context. He may have primarily been assuring his disciples here that even though they may have opposition, they must take heart at the fact that God is on their side and they will succeed because of that. Because that success will not be coming from them, but God will give them success. And yes, friends, this is an amazing offer by Jesus. This amazing offer from Jesus introduces us to the ABCs of prayer. Ask, believe, claim. If you ask in prayer, believe that you have it and claim it as yours, it is that simple, my dear friends. More amazing than the offer is the fact that most of us take so little advantage of this offer. If we were given, or if we were to be given a blank check by a wealthy relative of ours, and you are told to fill in whatever figure you wanted and turn it into cash. Oh yes, we would readily accept and make maximum use of that opportunity. Yet, here we are. Here we are. We have an offer by our most trustworthy relative, our brother, Jesus Christ, to draw on the most inexhaustible source of help from the most loving and giving Father, our Father God. The most giving Father that ever bore that title, and yet we are not taking that opportunity. We are not making use of that opportunity. And we seldom take that offer. We seldom take it up. And that is why we are lacking so much. How rich our lives would have been if we allowed him to give us all that he would like to give. How rich would our lives have been? How effective would be our ministry? Our ministry to others if we would link more to his grace and power. How effective would it have been? How much greater would be our peace and ability to cope when we are up against terrifying odds if only we had used this offer? Oh yes, my dear friends, Steps to Christ, pages 94 to 95 has this to say for us this morning. Why should the sons and daughters of God be reluctant to pray when prayer is the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse, where are treasured the boundless resources of omnipotence. The question is, why, why are we so reluctant to pray? Because if we were not reluctant to pray, Yes, we would utilize the key that we have, the key that is placed in our hand to unlock heaven's storehouse. But because we lack in faith, maybe we do not understand the, the, the power that is in prayer. Maybe we do not understand the omnipotence of prayer. Oh yes. My dear friends, there are treasures that are boundless. There are resources from the omnipotent God 
The only thing that we need to do is to ask. It is to pray in alignment with his will. It is to pray in faith. And then we are able to access these resources. Why are we so reluctant to pray? Maybe one reason is that we have an, an inbred, inherent spirit of independence, which directs us from childhood to look to our own resources to cope with life. Maybe that's why we are reluctant to pray. It is because of how we have been socialized or because we want to make sure we can prove to ourselves and to our neighbors that we can do it, that we can manage. Asking God for his input demonstrates dependence on him for the whole of our existence. That's what it means when we ask of God, when we ask from God, we acknowledge that we are dependent on you, our God, for the whole of our existence. Yes, we have to, because he's the one who has given us life. He's the one who's sustaining us, who's sustaining that life for us. It expresses our belief that even the very next heartbeat and the very next breath are gifts of his grace. We acknowledge that fact, that yes, we are alive because God allows us to be alive and he sustains that life of ours. He sustains us. He continues to provide for us. From the phrase, give us this day our daily bread, in the Lord's prayer. That is, we understand that we depend on him daily, day by day, and he is able to do just that. Some of us, we know exactly what it means to be given by God our daily bread. He gives you just enough for that day. He gives you just enough to, to succeed or to survive for that day because tomorrow he is already making sure today that he will have something for tomorrow. We know what it means to live daily, day by day, receiving our daily bread from God. The phrase that he has said to his disciples, asking for a mountain of dilemma and distress to be removed. We look to him in utter dependence on his goodness and his power. Yes, my dear friends, when we pray to God to remove a mountain before us, when we pray to God to remove a mountain of dilemma that is in front of us, we are actually saying, we are looking up to you with utter dependence, God. We are looking up to your goodness, but you exercise and you use your power to remove this mountain of dilemma in front of us. Another reason for our reluctance, it is because my dear friends, we are so distracted by our problems and challenges. It is because our focus is on the problems, it is on the challenges, and they distract us. Dear. Yes, they will be there because they are called, their, their main purpose is to distract us. They will be there, but it does not mean we must be distracted because they are there and because their sole purpose is to distract us. Yes, my dear friends, we do not have to be distracted by those. They should rather be our springboard into engaging God in the matter. They should rather be our stepping stones to know that we have a God who takes care of us. We have a God who provides strength when we need it, who provides us encouragement when we need it. They should rather be our springboard to engaging him in the matter. Yes, Peter, invites us, my dear friends, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That is First Peter 5, verse 7. And Paul in Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, 
by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God. Why with thanksgiving? Before we have even said amen, we should be thanking our God for deliverance. We should be thanking him for the providence because we know he is ready and willing to provide that which we need. And because we trust him, we know as we pray, we have believed as our text says, whatever we ask of him, believe it, we will be granted. We will be granted. Yes, anything that causes us anxiety should be an invitation to pray. Yes, my dear friends, we should say, yes, we are bothered. Yes, we are troubled, but we know we have a father. We know we have a big brother who can help us take care of whatever it is bothering us. And when we do that, we are not saying to God, remove this challenge. What we are saying to him, help us deal, help us withstand whatever is in front of us, whatever we are dealing with, help us to endure because we do not need to remove these uh, stumbling blocks. We do not need to remove them. We just need to change them into stepping stones. They must be our springing God to engage in our God. Yes, the song says it is the triumphs that draw us close to our God. We should be saying, thank you. Thank you for giving me this challenge because this challenge is now giving me an opportunity to reach out to my God, to reach out and touch his hand. And when I do that, I know the strength will be mine and I will conquer, and I will conquer. Yes, my dear friends, the asking must be accompanied by believing and claiming. This does not imply that God it is he's at our back and call, ready to do whatever we ask of him. No, that does not mean that he is too wise and good to give us everything that we think we need. We show our belief in his love and in his power best when we leave it to him, how we, our prayers should be answered. Leave it with God. He knows best. Oh yes, my dear friends, as we do that, he will do for us far more and better than we had dreamed of in the first place. This is our God. Oh yes, my dear friends, try him. You will never be disappointed. The only importance of prayer. Oh yes, I want us to realize that prayer is powerful, but we need to understand the ABCs of prayer. Ask, believe, and claim. And when you are done, before you even say amen, you must thank your God for you have received. Yes, faith are the hands that we utilize to receive, to grasp that which we are asking from God, even before we see it with our naked eye. That is what is called faith. And the potential of prayer this morning, we need to understand that prayer unlocks the treasures of heaven, boundless treasures of heaven. There are resources there for you and me, ready to assist you and me each day. Oh yes, prayer works. And because prayer works, you will then see in your life, prayer works. You will see the works of prayer because you will be able to witness. And throughout this week, God has given you, has shown you the works of prayer. You have a testimony. It may be different to others, but it is your testimony. It is especially made, designed for you to connect with your God so that when you are asked, who is God to you? Your answer is not an answer that is coming from anyone else, but it is your own answer because it is an answer coming from your own experience of God, from your own experiential relationship with God. Oh yes, our dear God is ready. He's ready to give us our heart's desires. Therefore, let's delight ourselves in him. May he bless us. May his face shine upon you. May his countenance 
shine upon you. May he hear you when you call. May he lift you up if you fall. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for being such a good God to us. Thank you for your love, your care, your mercies, which are new every day. I present to you your children this morning. Everyone on this platform, everyone who may have wanted to join, but because of circumstances beyond their power, their control, they could not join. But in spirit, they are with us. I pray that you extend your, your, your hand of providence to such people as well. Your healing hand to those in need of healing, dear Lord. I pray that you extend your healing hand and your presence be felt by each and everyone who is in need to be in your presence and be blessed by your presence this morning. Thank you for being such a good God to us. Thank you for showing us that all we need to do it is to ask in prayer. Believe that we have received as we claim the promises you have given us in your way. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being such a good God. Oh, you are awesome. Thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. We pray and ask for all this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.